far away. A young karate nerd explores the roots of karate, challenging his mind and body, and sharing his epic discoveries. Jesse Incap is the Karate Nerd in Okinawa. Japanese stoplights, like that one over there, are pretty interesting because they don't say green and red. They call it red and blue. So when the stoplight turns green, they say it turns blue. And this is because back in the old days, the Japanese language only had like five colors or so. And that's why, for example, the Japanese flag has a red sun and not a yellow sun. Because red and yellow is the same thing according to the Japanese. At least that's how it was back in the days. And also, of course, green and blue was considered the same thing. So green was called blue. Pretty interesting. Of course, today they have words for green and yellow and so on. But this is the old style of using the colors to, to describe the world. So the stoplight is not green and red, it's blue and red in Japan. Behind this wall right here is a famous Chinese style garden known as Fukushuen Koan. Fukushuen is uh, the Japanese pronunciation of Fujian which is the southernmost province in China where karate originated or at least the techniques that later became incorporated into karate from Fujian mostly white crane kung fu The reason they built this Fukushuen garden was to celebrate the friendship between Fujian in China or Fukushuen in Japanese and Okinawa, Naha City, where we're right now. Mm -hmm. And this friendship between China and Okinawa dates back to at least the 14th century, somewhere around the time that the Bubishi, the Bible of Karate, came to Okinawa with the fighting techniques uh, that later influenced so many of the pioneers of karate. Now let's explore the garden. Even the plants here are from China. This is a Chinese magnolia. Not that I know that, but the sign says that. All right, so we just bought some carp feed here. Carp is uh, koi. And we can actually throw this right in here and see if they like it. They're going crazy. You remind me of myself when my mom makes carrot cake. The hibiscus is the official national flower of Okinawa. And if you walk around the city, you'll see it everywhere. And actually, they even make a drink out of it, like a tea or a iced tea. Delicious. Listen guys, there's something I need to get off my chest and I think this is super important for you guys to know if you're watching this whole Karate Nerd in Okinawa adventure that I'm filming for you. The way I do things here, I mean hopping around in different dojos, visiting different senseis, trying different styles, that's not for everyone. The official, the correct way to practice Karate and Kobudo in Okinawa is to follow one sensei or one dojo or one style and then do exactly what he or she tells you to do. It's not correct protocol to visit different places and explore and ask and learn like I'm doing here. That's more of my karate nerd approach as you know. And the reason I can do that is because I have established these connections with different senseis because I've been here since I was a kid. 
So I sort of have a free pass because they understand me. But if you ever come to Okinawa, I don't recommend that you do what I'm doing right now. That's why I'm filming it for you. So when you get here or if you get here, then you know that you should really only go to one sensei and maximum two. For example, you could combine Uechiryu karate with uh, Kobudo. But only if the senseis have agreed on that and if they're friends. And that's how it's supposed to go. This would make an excellent bow for my Kobudo training. Bamboo. Now we're at the world famous dojo bar run by my good friend James Pankiewicz son. And I'm gonna go in here and have a look. They haven't officially opened yet because it's not 7 o'clock. So there will be no customers. But still, that will give you a good uh, look into the amazing interior of this dojo bar. the handle, the handle of the door is a tonfa, the, the Kobuda weapon. And these, you see these, they're from the Bubishi. Same stuff. Dojo bar. Let's go in. Here we are. There's the man himself. James son. First time I came to the dojo bar was in, I think, 2009. Did you open in 2009? That's right. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a really nice opening party, but it didn't look like this. Now it seems like thousands of people have signed the walls all over. And some of these things in here should probably belong to a museum like this. This is the actual karate gi belong that belonged to Nagamine Shoshin, founder of Matsubayashi Ryu. That's really cool. It's perfect. Yeah. So James, son, can you tell the viewers at home how it all started with the dojo bar? Well, I thought that uh, there should be a meeting place in Okinawa for karateka. Yeah. So all of the people that travel here from around the world to discover karate in Okinawa and the Okinawa karateka. Yeah, to come and meet those those visitors. So that's what the dojo bar is. So the dojo bar is like a hot pot where like international visitors mm -hmm. and Okinawan karate masters and practitioners come to meet and exchange ideas and stuff yes. like that. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's sort of like an international sort of neutral ground, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can come out of the dojo. Yeah. They can relax a little bit. Yeah. You know, and just in a friendly atmosphere, get to know each other better. More in an informal way. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because sometimes in a dojo, it can get competitive with different styles, different organizations. But here, after a few, uh, what do you have here? Habu sake, awamori, beer, you know? Yep, yep. Maybe uh, people can let loose, right? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that, that I hear uh, quite a lot from our Okinawan customers is that it is a place where they can just relax. Yeah. can enjoy, you know, some, some uh, international drinks. Yeah. Um, and just get to know people. Yeah. Uh, uh, outside of the dojo, I think it's important to have a place like that. Yeah. Uh, and for foreigners, it's an easy place for them to find. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, uh, yeah, there have been a lot of really um, kind of fun meetings here. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, and, uh, and often, actually, kind of informal karate lessons here as uh -huh. well. Um, and uh, that can be some of the best teaching, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. And last question, how many boards do you have to break if you want to work here? <laughs> <laughs> the whole counter. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I, I need to review that with my staff. But, um, <laughs> okay. but a lot of my staff are karateka. Yeah. Um, that was the thing that I wanted to do, was to make sure that the dojo bar was staffed by people who love karate. Exactly. Uh, so a lot of my staff are people who've come to Okinawa yeah. um, with that passion. Yeah. Um, and that uh, definitely adds to yeah. you know, our karate atmosphere. Awesome. So you guys at home, if there's anything you want to know, see, visit or do here in Okinawa, check out the dojo bar and James because he's the main man when it comes to connecting foreigners and Okinawan masters. These photos are beautiful. Actually, this one right here, do you see this? The Kokoro, 
which means heart or spirit, was given to be, me by uh, Higao Namorio Sensei in 2009 when the dojo bar opened. And that was like my gift to James san uh, for opening this. And it's pretty cool that it's on the wall here, right next to these beautiful uh, kanji. The fist sculpture there was made by Toyama Sensei. Ah, to your mouth, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he he, lo he likes, loves to sculpt, he loves uh -huh. to make art. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I said to him, did you model that on your own fist, Sensei? Yeah. He said, yes. <laughs> it made me a little bigger. <laughs> 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 it's a fantastic piece of work. Hey, but, it's awesome. But um, the funny thing is, is that it's hollow. Oh, it's hollow inside. So I used to kind of have it on the bar. Yeah. But people keep it. <laughs> using like a like a whole fist. Uh, yeah. No 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 no. You can't do that. No, this is a piece of art. Yeah. <laughs> From a master. Give it back. <laughs> People are like, oh, 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 no, no, give it back. <laughs> so yeah. See this is some. Uh, but it doesn't have any cracks or anything. It's still whole. No, it's yeah. still still in good shape. It's survived. Still in good shape. Yeah. Huh. It's flattened the Mackie wear on knuckles. It's <laughs> cool. All right, so I have the great honor of signing the wall again, like I've done before, but I can't find my previous signing. So Jameson saved this huge spot for me right here. And of course it has to say, there you go. <laughs> Now we're on the way to my friend Takuya who has his uh, own dojo where he teaches a kid's class and I'm gonna help him teach that class in English. That'll be fun. Takuya is a member of the Japanese national team and he's also a world champion in Team Kata and we've known each other for many years now so I'm looking forward to this. We have snow in Sweden. Yuki. Haksan, it's here, Ima. And then your knee to your shoulder, Iza to your kata, like this. This way. Okay? Go, 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 go. Well, that was fun, right? Those kids were super well behaved compared to some Western dojos where I've been. But it was pretty strange for me to teach Japanese kids in English since I usually teach Westerners in Japanese. Uh, but I still, I hope they learn some cool English words. Uh, and if you're wondering why Takuya Sensei had a blue belt on, it's because he told me his black one is so stinky and smelly from all the training he does with the national team. Anyway, I'm heading right now to the dojo of Kinjo Sensei for some practice of my own. And this time it's Kobudo, the ancient weapons. Kinjo Sensei is known not only for his awesome Kobudo skills, but he actually makes the weapons himself. And I've heard he has an epic collection of old school weapons in his room where he makes them. I hope to see that room. Uh, I cannot do it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay.
これも入りにしてはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいはいそう、like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so、はい。はい。前のうまいアイディア。<笑>ああ面白い。わあ。はあ。これもあ。わあ。<笑>これ上地流技。いや。上地流。上地技。あ痛い。だ<笑><笑>から毎日練習をこうして。はい毎日これ毎日。はい。はい。そはい。はい、<笑>これもね毎日こう。九州。はい。これでしょ。はい。でこれは。シュート、うん、はい、ショコロ、で、ついね、はい、で、これショコロ、ショーケンも、ショーケン、あ、ショーケン、ボシケン、ボシケン、こうして、あ、フライング、うん、腕タンデン、こうこて、こて、はい、こて、あ、ワン、も、負けほら、はいはい、<笑>出た、すね、すね、すね、はいはいはい、こっちね、はい、O M G。That training with Kinjo Sensei and his son was awesome. I can really see why his son is multiple times Okinawan champion with his staff. Too bad his brother wasn't there because both of them are really good. After training, Kinjo Sensei actually took me up to his apartment, which was located in the same building as the dojo. And he showed me, like I said before, that room where he makes all of his weapons. And it was incredible. He said he has. Over 700 nunchucks, but he was probably being humble. It seemed more like 800, I think. And then the turtle shells, which they use as a shield, is known as the timbe in the Okinawa language, together with a short spear, the rochin. You use those、uh, in combat. And then he brought something from a secret closet, and no, it was not booze, it was a long stick. That had belonged to Taira Shinken, the legendary pioneer of Ryukyu Kobudo, together with a shorter stick that belonged to Kian Chotoku, the famous Tomarite Shorindu pioneer. And he had saved those、uh, and he treasured those weapons, together with the Sai, the iron Sai that had also belonged to Taira Shinken. And I could really see that they were special to him, so it was special to me that he wanted me to see them. And even use them, and that was really cool. The, the shorter stick of Kian Sensei was egg shaped, and I've never seen an egg shaped bowl before. And then he actually offered some wine, so we toasted, had a glass of wine, and said, Kampai, which means cheers in Japanese. Great time. You know what I think is crazy? That some of these masters that I'm training with here, and I mean, they're 10th Dan, 9th Dan, Hanshi, Shihan, they have these huge ranks and titles. They've been practicing their whole lives. They're basically some of the best in the world. And that's not to brag, that's just a fact. And yet, they cannot make a living from teaching and sharing and spreading their art. Some of these karate instructors have two or three jobs just to put food on the table. I just think that's a shame. If you're the best in the world at what you do, you should not have to have,、uh, you should not have to be a cab driver to make ends meet. So that's why I'm so grateful that I'm able to come here and learn from these masters and help them.
pass on their knowledge to the next generation.